Welcome. Welcome to Lamb of God this fantastic Sunday morning. It is Sunday, isn't it? I think it is. Yes. Somewhere it is. God's blessings to all of you that are gathered here in the sanctuary today, as well as all of you who are watching at home. Wanted to give you an update on Carrie, uh, secretary here at Lamb of God. Our Lord answers prayer, and he answers prayer mightily, and he's answered prayer in her life and in our life because she, uh, last week on Thursday, tested COVID-19 negative. Yes, thank you, Lord. So she has been welcomed back to work. She worked Friday for a little bit, and she worked Saturday for a little bit, and she will be in here the next following week. Uh, she is not working her full shift uh, because she is taking care of her parents, and there's still some health concerns there from them. So uh, we're just thankful. I, I am especially thankful. It has been impressed upon me and humbled me at how much work she does and how incapable I am of doing her job. All of our Bible studies have returned as well. Monday, 1 p.m., we have our women's Bible study with Pastor Hensler on Haggai, Zechariah, and Malachi. We've started a men's devotional study on Tuesday morning. By that, I mean it's a short half hour or less little devotional that we do. Otherwise, it's an opportunity for men to come and gather together and just talk about man stuff, you know. Grunt a little bit like Tim Allen, do that kind of stuff. If you're into that, that's Tuesday mornings. Uh, they gather at, uh, I believe they gather at 8, and the devotion starts around 9. Lifelike Bible study, uh, Gospel of Matthews, on Wednesdays at 10 a.m., and we have resurrected the Joseph Carpenter of Steel study Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m. Everything except for the Tuesday morning men's study is available on Zoom, and also it's loaded onto our YouTube uh, channel so you can watch it later there. A big thank you to all of you who came yesterday and helped tear down the Christmas decorations. Thank you very much. You'll notice Pastor wasn't there, so there should have been plenty of food for you all to eat afterwards, right? Okay. Uh, the Heartbeat Crib is set up in the Narthex. That's where we can receive donations to give to Heartbeat Crib, which provides blankets and diapers and baby bottles and pacifiers and new and used infant clothing to all those mothers who are in need. So a worthy cause, if you have something along those lines, you can drop it in the baby crib out there. There's more information on your news and notes, which, since Carrie's back, you all got news and notes in your worship folder. Thank you, Jesus. Script orders are going to be taken today in the fellowship hall, and you can pick them up next Sunday. Please note there will be no script orders taken next month in February. This coming Friday from noon to 5.45 p.m. will be our blood drive. Is Al here? Okay, I believe you can sign up online. If not, it looks like you can show up. I saw they have people that are planning on manning the tables. Does anybody know if there's open slots? That was my question. There's a lot of open slots? Okay. So you can just show up Friday at noon, uh, between noon and 5.45 if you want to be part of giving blood here in the fellowship hall. We are still planning on starting a confirmation program later this month. Your pastor's been a little bit slow in getting things together. I've been busy, but hey, you know, sorry. <laughs> Please forgive me. <laughs> we will get that going, and I will try to get it started uh, before the end of this month. And uh, I need to sit down and talk with Katie Grimm, who's going to be leading most of the classes. But if you have students or children between the age of 7th grade and 12th grade that are not members, it's a good way for them to become members. Please uh, call our church office or email us and let us know and give them uh, your name. This class will be done either, either and or in the fellowship hall, live, or on Zoom. We'll offer it that way for those that are a little reticent about coming because of COVID-19 and being around others. Speaking of that, realizing that there are people, if you watching at home, who would love and are missing the Lord's Supper, but because of your health situation and because what's going on with COVID-19 are fearful of coming here, I would like to offer you this opportunity. Pastor Hensler or I would be welcome to come to your house once a month at a time of your choosing and do a short devotional service with you and provide communion with you. 
I could never do this on my own, it would be too much, but with Pastor Hensler helping me and he is willing to do that, we would like to offer this to you. So if that's of interest to you, you can contact the church office, you can email the church office, you can email me, and we will try to set something up for you. It would be the same kind of thing that we would do if you were a uh, homebound person or back when I used to be able to visit people at the nursing homes, it's the same kind of thing. We come, share a word of God with you, and do uh, the sacrament of the Lord's Supper for you. During our worship service today, uh, we are going to be recognizing uh, those who have served on our uh, church council in the past, and one of those was Al Stang. So we will recognize him in absentia, and also we are going to welcome those who are going to be serving on our church council for 2021 as part of our worship service. Finally, and this is, I got to credit BG for this, credit him. For those of you worshiping at home that have prayer requests, you can, in the little comment section beside the Facebook Live feed, put your prayer requests there. And then before the time of prayer comes, BG will write them down and the elder will bring them up to me and we can include them in the prayers of the church uh, for this morning. I thought it was a great idea. And then we're happy to be able to do that. With that, the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's take a moment, raise our hands, and with a wave and a smile beneath your mask, share that peace of Christ with the worshipers around you. And also, look in the camera and share it with those that are worshiping at home. With that, let us begin our opening worship song, uh, 596, All Christians Who Have Been Baptized. invite you now to stand as you are able. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And you forgave the iniquity of my sin. We pause for a moment and examine our heart for the sin and iniquity which rests there. Almighty God, our Maker and Redeemer, we poor sinners confess unto you that we are by nature sinful and unclean, and that we have sinned against you by thought, word, and deed. Wherefore we flee for refuge to your infinite mercy, 
seeking and imploring your grace for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ. O oh, most merciful God, who has given your only begotten Son to die for us, have mercy upon us, and for his sake grant us remission of all our sins, and by your Holy Spirit increase in us true knowledge of you and of your will and true obedience to your word, to the end that by your grace we may come to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, has had mercy upon us and has given his only Son to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all our sins. To those who believe on his name, he gives the power to become the children of God and has promised them his Holy Spirit. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. Grant this, Lord, unto us all. Amen. Together now we responsively read Psalm 29. Ascribe to the Lord, O heavenly beings. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due to name. Worship the Lord in the splendor of holiness. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders, the Lord over many waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. He makes Lebanon to skip like a calf, and Syrian like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord flashes forth flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the deer give birth, and then strikes the forest bare. The Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forever. May the Lord give strength to his people. May the Lord bless his people with peace. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Father in heaven, at the baptism of Jesus in the Jordan River, 
you proclaimed him your beloved son and anointed him with the Holy Spirit. Make all who are baptized in his name faithful in their calling as your children and inheritors with him of everlasting life. Through the same, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Congregation may be seated. This would be the time I would call the young children up front for a message. And uh, without any young children, yeah, I'll sit down and talk to you not so young children and all of you children that are watching at home. How many of you that are here remember seeing a baptism in the sanctuary? It's been a while, hasn't it? It's not that we haven't done baptisms, but the last several baptisms I've done have been private affairs, usually on a weekday or on a Saturday. And, and that's fine. That's, that's a baptism. The Holy Spirit was present and did the work that he normally does. But, you know, in my mind, it's just not the same. And I know it's not the same for you. When you get to watch a child being baptized, it's a very precious moment, isn't it? And I see smiles on people's faces. And, and contrary to what the parents believe, when they cry, that's actually a pretty cool thing. <laughs> I don't mind that at all. It is an auspicious moment and a moving moment, and it's good, right, and proper. Let them cry all they want. But there's another reason, and this is for your benefit. It's beneficial for you and for me to see a child being baptized because we remember our baptism. Many of us, it happens so early in our age, we can't remember it, can we? And even the younger children that are watching probably can't remember theirs. But it's good to remember that that, at one point in time, there was a day when that happened. And when it was, it was a miraculous event. Something supernatural happened in your life. And thankfully, we have our account uh, from our gospel reading of the baptism of Jesus. From Mark 1, 10 and 11, And when he came up out of the water, he being Jesus, immediately he saw the heavens being torn open and the Spirit descending on him like a dove, and the voice came from heaven which said, You are my beloved Son, with you I am well pleased. Well, that's Jesus' baptism. And I grant you, we're not Jesus. But it's your baptism and my baptism. We may not have seen the heavens torn open, but in that water the Holy Spirit descended and came upon you and entered your life and began a wondrous work in you that has not ended, moving you to confess and repent of your sins and know that you're forgiven. It's a work that continues even to this day. And the same declaration that the Father gave Jesus, because he cleanses all of your sin. Because in his eyes, it is gone forever. He now pronounces the same declaration to you. Not something that you've earned, but something that Jesus has given you. He has made you his beloved son, his beloved daughter. And because of your faith in Christ, he is well pleased with you. Because he was well pleased with the Savior who came to die for you. That's why it's important for us to remember. Because kids at home, you struggle with obeying, don't you? You struggle with obeying your parents. You struggle with obeying the Ten Commandments. I struggle with obeying the Ten Commandments. I struggle with confessing the times that I'm wrong. And it's important for me for that reason to remember my baptism, to remember what Jesus came and did in my life, how he changed me, and how he continues to change me each and every day. And that's a wondrous thing in each one of our lives. Let's pray and thank the Lord for all that he's done for us. And you can repeat after me. Dear Jesus, thank you for leading me to the waters of baptism. Thank you for the way you continue to work in my heart and my life. Keeping my faith alive in you. In your name I pray. Amen. 
Thank you all for listening. Thank you all for remembering with me. Children at home, you can go back to what you're doing, but don't stray too far. You can continue to listen as you will. Our Old Testament lesson this morning comes from Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening and there was morning, the first day. This is the word of the Lord. Our epistle lesson comes from Romans chapter 6, and it will be the basis for our sermon meditation today. Paul writes, What shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin still live in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, in order that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing, so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. For one who has died has been set free from sin. Now, if we have died for, with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ being raised from the dead will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death he died to sin once and for all, but the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. I would invite you now to stand as you are able. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter. John appeared baptizing in the wilderness and proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And all the country of Judea and all Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair and wore a leather belt around his waist and ate locusts and wild honey. And he preached, saying, After me comes he who is mightier than I, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And when he came up out of the water, immediately he saw the heavens open and the Spirit descending on him like a dove and a voice from heaven. You are my beloved son. With you I am well pleased. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, o Christ. Together let us confess that faith that we were given in our baptism, that Christian faith, through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. 
he descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Congregation may be seated.
Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. You want to know how to start a lively discussion on Facebook? I found out. Post anything at all about what happened on January 6th at the Capitol. Now, I did a post that I thought was pretty innocuous. As a pastor, I called and expressed the need for peace and calm at a troubled time, stating the obvious. No matter what problem you see existing in the world, no matter what your problem is with Congress or the government, to be a mob and to storm the Capitol building and to use violence is never, ever an acceptable thing. And I stated that. I stated it in generalities that not just in this case, but any time one expresses their political opinions and their desires for change in a manner of violence, is working against the will of God and who we should be as Christians. And in my mind, that included the violence that happened in the summer with Black Lives Matter. But I found it out pretty quickly, and I expected there to be a few people that would take issue with something I said. Mostly I was looking at those people I'm friends with on Facebook who are not exactly Christian. I was very surprised when some people who I know from my home church took issue with what I said. I had pressed a button in their life. I didn't mean to, but I did. And that got me wondering. And perhaps I'm going to continue to press a button with what I say next. I believe that when you're standing before a crowd of people who are already incited, you need to be careful what you say. And the speech that you make should be looked at with open eyes. Not saying that the people who gave speeches before that crowd, before they marched down to the Capitol, not saying they are totally responsible for what happened. That was the crowd itself. That was crowd mentality, storming the Capitol, doing what is wrong. But as leaders of this country, you need to be careful with what you say, realizing the temperature of the crowd and how on edge they are. Well, there's my comment on Republicans. How about Democrats? I was sorry to see after this happened some of the leaders of the Democratic Party bringing up how the Capitol Police and those trying to defend the Capitol would have used more force if the people storming the Capitol had been black. I found that very, very wrong. To bring that up now with all that's going on is not worthy, it's not good, it's not healing for our country. And people who follow them need to take a good look at what they say. Just as those who follow the Republican Party need to take a good look at what they say and what they do. With that said, I want to ask you a question. Did anything in that statement press a button with you? Because... Well, I'd been reading something from a book called Christians in the Age of Outrage, How to Bring Our Best When the World is at Its Worst. The author is Ed Stetzer. He's quoting Tim Keller here, who something, says something very enlightening, especially for our times and especially for right now. When we center our lives on the idol, we become dependent on it. If our counterfeit God is threatened in any way, our response is complete panic. This may be the reason why so many people respond to U.S. political trends in such an extreme way. When either party wins an election, a certain percentage of the losing side talks about openly leaving the country. They have put the kind of hope their political leaders and, pol and they have put the kind of hope in their political leaders and policies that once was, was reserved for God and the work of the gospel. If something I said about either party presses a button with you, it's time to take a look. To take a look at your relationship with political leaders and political parties and political ideology. It's what I would ask those people who responded to my Facebook post. Who exactly is your God? Do you allow your political leaders and political parties to be wrong? To confess that they can be wrong and make a mistake? Or do you stand by them 
and argue for them so vociferously that you lash out against people of a differing opinion. People who are brothers and sisters in Christ, just as you are. People who you have been called to share the gospel with. It's a sad fact in us, we all have idols. Your idol might, may not be a political party or a political leader, but generally in some way, shape, or form, we make an idol out of ourself. You think of the word sin. You've always heard the I in sin. The I in sin. The I in sin could be an idol, which is me. When I see myself as never being wrong, unable to confess to my neighbor that I've wronged them or that I'm wrong when I stand by myself so strongly that I refuse to see what the Holy Spirit is pointing out in my life and in the life of others. You're guilty of that, and so am I. Thankfully, our God doesn't stand by and let us hold fast to idols. He comes to break the power of idols over us. And one of the ways that I happen to reflect on that this happened is a story from 1 Kings chapter 18. The idol that the nation of Israel has come to believe in is Baal. And the Lord sends Elijah to smash their faith in this false idol. And so there's going to be a competition on Mount Hermon. The prophets of Baal versus the one prophet of the Lord God. And here's what will happen. Each will build an altar each will present a sacrifice. The God who answers with fire, he is the Lord God. So the numerous prophets of Baal go to work, and they spend most of the day chanting, calling, praying, even going so far as to cut themselves to try to gain Baal's attention so that he will answer with fire. And of course, nothing happens. They keep going and they keep going and they keep going until they wear themselves out, Well, Elijah sits there with some great comments. Yell louder. Perhaps Baal is asleep. Perhaps he's gone to the restroom. But Baal doesn't answer. And finally the Lord calls on Elijah, and he builds an altar, a very simple altar, and puts the sacrificial bull on top of that altar and puts the wood there. And then does something nobody expected. He asks for that altar and that wood and that sacrifice to be doused with water. Repeatedly. Again and again and again. Till there's so much water that it collects in a trough around the altar. And then Elijah prays a simple prayer. And you know what happens. The Lord God, because he is the only God, answers with fire. Answers in such a supernatural and strong way that not only is the wood consumed and the bull on the altar consumed, but the very stones that make up the altar are consumed and the water is evaporated. Because he alone is the Lord God. And he wanted his people to know that there is no other God, no other place to put your trust besides him. He is the powerful one. His voice is is more powerful than any other force on this earth. David is picking up on this in Psalm 29 when he talks about the voice of the Lord flashing forth in flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the deer give birth and strips the forest bare, and in his temple all cry glory. The Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forever. The Lord God, he is the only one that brings strength to his people. He is the one from which all blessings flow. And he is the one that didn't stand by idly and let us worship our idols, but instead sent his voice, his word down to earth to do something about it. His word being Jesus. Jesus, God the Son, came down became a man, took on human flesh so he could win the victory for us that we could never win. A victory not only over the idols in our life but behind the evil force that's behind all idols, Satan. He came and took Satan on right after his baptism in the wilderness. Satan threw everything he had to tempt him in his humanity and Jesus turned to the voice of the Lord to defend himself 
the word of God. And when he left the wilderness, he took it right to Satan, the gospel message. Preaching, repent for the kingdom of heaven is hand. Repent, the same message in John's baptism message. Turn. Turn from your idols, turn from your sin, and believe the good news because I, Jesus, am the good news. But his most decisive victory against idols and against evil came on the cross where he took from us all the ways that we disobey God, all the ways and all the things we have as idols, all the times that we refuse to confess that we are wrong, he took those from us and took them all away when he died. Removed them from our record and then rose again so that we could know, yes, That was our sacrifice. Yes, we are forgiven. Yes, now God looks at us different because of everything that he has done. Jesus was the one person that never needed to be baptized because he had no sin. But he said to John, this is in keeping with God's righteousness. We must do this. Why? So that his baptism could be connected with your baptism. So that when you are baptized, the same thing that happened to Christ happened to you. The Holy Spirit descended upon you in the water and entered you to change your life forever. To make this statement that the Father said about the Son true in your life. To change you and give you everything that Christ earned for you on the cross. So when the Father looks at you, he says, you, you are my beloved Son. You are are my beloved daughter. Not because of what you've done, but because of everything Christ has done and given to you. With you now, I am well pleased. In Romans, as Paul talks to us about what baptism should mean to us, he reminds us of this intimate uniting that we have in our baptism with Christ and his work. We've been united in his death. His death for our sin means that not only our sin, but that sinful part of me that wants to create idols, that refuses to admit that I'm wrong, that sinful part of me died. It died with Christ and is buried. And then through my baptism, a new person arises in his resurrection. One that doesn't want to hold fast to idols anymore but wants to serve my Lord and Savior. To not only be his servant, but in a matter of fact, be his slave. Paul continues on, we know that our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing. Now it would be nice if I could tell you that sinful part of you that wants to create idols, it died, it's gone, and you and I know that's not true. It still is very much active in our lives today. Brought to nothing. Its power has been brought to nothing. So that even though it's there to tempt you, you do not have to listen to it. And as a matter of fact, you have the Holy Spirit in you to say, don't listen to it. You don't need to be enslaved to that voice anymore. You've died to it. You've died to that life, and you've risen again to a new life. And by the way, when you do listen to it, know that that sin has been washed away to the cross and is forgiven as are all your other sins. So when we do fail and we do listen, when we do make things idols and more important in our life than God, know that there is forgiveness. That his pointing out those idols in our life is for that reason so we would recognize it and through the power of the Holy Spirit repent and say that is wrong, Lord please forgive me And here in the words of the absolution, yes. Yes, you are forgiven. Yes, my spirit is still with you. Yes, I love you. Yes, I am drawing you closer to me, even now, as you worship me through the words of Scripture. How should we consider our lives going forward? No matter what we do in our life, know that you are dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. You live a new life. And no, it's not perfect. And yes, we're going to struggle with sin. 
But through your baptism, when God looks at you, he doesn't see the sinner that's struggling. He sees his Savior. He sees the one that gives you the right standing that he earned on the cross. He sees you as his beloved son or daughter, brought into his family by everything that Christ has done, made a part of his family in your baptism. Through that miraculous working that happened once in many of our lives long ago, but has not stopped and continues to work even to this day. Works most especially when we stand here at the beginning of service and confess our sins and then hear the words of forgiveness, the declaration of grace and the absolution. Yes, though you've sinned, you're forgiven. Yes, those these things are wrong, they have been washed away. Go now, living your new life living a life that's dedicated to obedience to Jesus. And when you do fall, know that that forgiveness still extends to you. And that in your heart, that consternation you have when you sin means that the Holy Spirit is still working, still pointing out all the ways that we create idols in our heart. We're all tempted. We're all tempted at times to make things as idols. I read the same things you are, and I find feelings rising in my heart that make me want to cry out, and I want to stop and say, wait a minute. This may be wrong, but wait a minute. Who am I in Christ Jesus? Am I somebody that needs to defend a political party or a political leader? Or am I somebody that needs to reach out with understanding and grace and forgiveness with those who believe differently than I? Am I somebody that has life now and eternal life to come? Am I somebody that should find it more important to communicate the gospel of forgiveness than to prove that I'm right or my candidate is right or that my party is right? Because there will come a day when candidates and parties and all that will be gone and it'll just be us and Jesus. And the important thing for the church is not to stand beside a political party. There is no Christian party. It's to stand beside your Savior and to use any opportunity that we have to share the gospel of forgiveness, to share the wonderful gift that we've been given in baptism that continually washes us and makes us right, no matter what idols we try to set up in our life. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, may it keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. This would be the time in the service when we would pass the offering plate, and instead of doing that, we just remind you of your obligation, especially members here, uh, to give your offering, and you can do so by dropping it in the box outside on the narthex or across from the office during the week, mailing it in or giving through our online portal. Our offering verse from today comes from Romans 6, chapter 11. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. Let us now stand and sing to our Lord and Savior. Congregation may be seated. At this time, we would like to recognize servants of the congregation who have served us faithfully, faithfully over the past few years. And as I said, I want to honor Al Stang, but he is not here, so we will do so in absentia. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, Al Stang has served our Lord faithfully for the past two years as chairman of finance here at Lamb of God Lutheran Church. 
Hear what the Holy Scriptures have to say about those who serve in the church. I thank my God in all my remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine for you making my, my prayer with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. And I am sure of this, that he who has begun a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. It is right for me to feel this way about you all, because I hold you in my heart, for you are all partakers with me of grace, both in my imprisonment and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel. For God is my witness, how I yearn for you all with the affection of Jesus Christ. And we also read, and let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which you indeed were called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Let us pray. Gracious Father, you direct your people to use their gifts in service to others. Receive our thanks and praise for the faithful service of Al Stang. Bless him with wisdom and patience, with love and faithfulness to your word, that he may continue to serve you with gladness to whatever service you call him to, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Amen. Go now in the name of the Lord, Al, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. The Almighty, most merciful God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. Amen. At this time, I would like to invite those members of the church council who are here to join me up front surrounding the altar. Beloved in the Lord, Holy Scripture admonishes us that all things should be done decently and in order. To that end, the Constitution and bylaws of this congregation establish various offices to which men and women are elected and appointed to serve. In doing so, the Church follows the example of the early Christian Church as described in Acts chapter 6. The Twelve summoned the full member of the disciples and said, it is not right that we should give up preaching the word of God to serve tables. Therefore, brothers, pick out from among you seven men of good repute, full of the spirit and of wisdom, who we will appoint to this duty. But we will devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. The Apostle Peter writes in his first epistle, Each has received a gift. Use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's varied grace. Whoever speaks as one who speaks oracles of God. Whoever serves as one who serves by the strength that God supplies. In order that in everything, God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. To him belongs glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Before us to serve in 2021 on the church council, Ron Jonas, elected to another term as chairman of the congregation. Irv Glan, who continues to serve as chairman of the elders. Janet Hudson, who we will welcome in absentia. She is serving as council secretary. Mikkel Wilson has been elected to serve the chairman of finance. We will welcome him in absentia. Bonnie P continues to serve as chairman of the stewardship and evangelism committee. We welcome her in absentia. Faith Moss continues to serve as chairman of the trustees. And Christine Cates serves as chairman of Christian education and youth. You have been chosen to fill specific offices and positions of responsibility at Lamb of God Lutheran Church. You are to work with a pastor that our life together in Christ may be orderly and pleasing in his sight. 
You are to see that the services in God's house are held at proper times with the word of God purely preached and taught according to the Lutheran confessions, that the sacraments of Christ are administered according to his institution, that provision is made for the Christian instruction of the young and old, and that the erring are admonished, and that discipline is maintained. You are to see that the temporal affairs of the congregation are properly administered, and that proper support is provided for the workers of this congregation. You are to assist in the caring of the poor and the sick, in cultivating harmony among the members, in promoting the general welfare of the congregation, and furthering the kingdom of Christ here and throughout the world. While holiness of life and obedience to Christ are expected of all members of the congregation, it is especially important that you, as office bearers in his church, show yourselves by word and example to be faithful to him in service and Christian devotion. In the presence of God and of his congregation, I therefore ask you, do you accept the office entrusted to you? Do you promise faithfully to carry out your duties, trusting in the Lord and conforming yourself to his word in accordance with the faith of the Evangelical Lutheran Church? If so, then answer, I do. I do. Beloved in the Lord, you have heard the promises of the faithfulness spoken by these men and women whom you have elected and selected to serve as officers of Lamb of God Lutheran Church. Do you promise to support them in their work, to remember them in your prayers, and to work with them to the best of the abilities that God has given you, so that he may be glorified in his work done in our midst? If so, then answer, we do. Brothers and sisters in Christ, it is my pleasure to install you as officers of Lamb of God Lutheran Church in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Almighty and most merciful God, enlighten and strengthen you in your offices, that you may be good and faithful stewards to the glory of his name and the good of his people. I would invite you all to stand as you are able. Let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we give thanks that you have raised up these servants for work among your people. We humbly implore you to grant them, by your Holy Spirit, those gifts needed for the faithful carrying out of their tasks, most especially wisdom, strength, and willing hearts. Let your blessing rest on this congregation. Strengthen the faith, quicken the love, enkindle the zeal of its members, that your name may be glorified, and that here in all places under heaven the kingdom of your Son may be advanced. We remember with thanksgiving those who have faithfully served your people and have now completed their time of service. We pray that in the end of days, we, with all your faithful people, may hear the voice of Christ saying, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Go in the name of the Lord. Be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. The Almighty, most merciful God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. You may return to your seats. And you may be seated for the prayers of the church. In peace, <clears throat> let us pray to the Lord. Lord in thanksgiving for the revelation of Jesus Christ to us in his wondrous epiphany in the Jordan, and for the revelation of God's name and blessing us in holy baptism, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for all the baptized children of God, that we may die, daily die to sin and rise to newness of life, let us pray to the Lord. 
for the Holy Christian Church here and scattered throughout the world, that God would send laborers into the harvest, give steadfast faith to Christians by preaching his word and through the holy sacraments, enliven the love of saints to bear one another's burdens and show mercy to those outside the church and quicken us in the hope of eternal life in Christ Jesus. Let us pray to the Lord. For the family, especially all Christian homes, for husbands and wives, that God would turn them toward one another in love, for fathers and mothers, that God would equip them for the holy duty as teachers of the faith, and for all children, that God would preserve them in the saving faith and certain promise of their baptism unto everlasting life. Let us pray to the Lord. For our nation and its leaders, for those who serve for the good of our people and for their protection, for peace in our time and for the peace which God alone can give, let us pray to the Lord. For the sick, depressed, tired, confused, those in any need, and especially those listed in our prayer guide, as well as these for whom special prayers have been requested. For peace, and that all the hatred and violence and uprising would go away, let us pray to the Lord. For Marlene Aldridge's brother-in-law, Gary, who's recovering from prostate surgery, that the Lord would work healing in his life, let us pray to the Lord. For Wendy Paxton's best friend's husband, Dan, who's having brain surgery today, that the Lord would guide the, servants, the surgeon's hands and that he would come to a complete recovery, let us pray to the Lord. For prayers of thanksgiving from Debbie Rush, for Jennifer, who is recovering from surgery, that the Lord would continue her recovery, let us pray to the Lord. For prayers of thanksgiving, for Alicia Keel, that Friday is the second anniversary of her brain aneurysm and her miraculous recovery. With thanksgiving and love, let us pray to the Lord. For Barb Pike's stepdaughter, Christine, who has dementia, and for her family who must choose her care options, that they would be guided to create, to make the correct decisions, and that the Lord would bless those decisions. Let us pray to the Lord. For Ralph Horwood, who continues to heal and recover at Regency Nursing Home, that he would be provided with all that is needed for his recovery. Let us pray to the Lord. For Jane Hilliker's daughter, Christy, who has a cyst on her pancreas, that surgeons and doctors would be able to solve this problem and bring her to complete recovery, let us pray to the Lord. For Nicholas Grimm, who is suffering from medical conditions, that the Lord would work in his life to bring him complete recovery, let us pray to the Lord. For William Lasley's family, with the loss of their father, that the grace and mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ would be upon them, that the hope of the resurrection would lift them up through their mourning. Let us pray to the Lord. For Teresa Schrott, having soldier surgery on Thursday this week, that the doctors and the nurses would be able to do this operation with complete success and bring her to complete recovery. Let us pray to the Lord. For all those celebrating birthdays this week, especially for Al Stang, Kaylee Marcinowski, Becky Jackson, Michael Aldridge, and Christine Cates, that they would continue in, hate, in health and faith, let us pray to the Lord. For all those celebrating birth uh, anniversaries this week, including Robert and Mary Chenier's, that the Lord would continue to strengthen their love for Christ and their love for one another. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord God, Heavenly Father, you manifested yourself with the Holy Spirit in fullness of grace at the baptism of your dear Son, with your voice who directed, uh, directed us to him who has borne our sins, that we might receive grace and the remission of sins. Keep us, we beseech you, in the true faith. Since we have been baptized in accordance with your command and at the example of your dear Son, 
We pray you to strengthen our faith in your Holy Spirit and lead us to everlasting life and salvation through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. I would invite you to stand as you are able. Taught by our Lord and trusting in his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. of the Lord be with you always. Please take a moment to share that peace with those who can't be here today through a phone call or a text or your choice of social media. Reach out to your brothers and sisters in Christ who are homebound and may be in need of your help with transportation or groceries or just to say hello, we think about you and we love you. In doing so, reach out with the love of Christ as his church. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. We'll take a break here for about 10 minutes where we set the Lord's table. You're invited to stay and mingle or invited to leave as you so desire. <laughs> 